Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OAA, the host of Last Week Brain Cells, and host between two minutes on Oriented Intelligence. like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud, those watching Oriented with Television, and also those um, watching on YouTube. Um, a lot to talk about this week here. Obviously, we got some breaking news over at Ox. We're going to break that down. We're also going to recap the um, L- the um, Oxford Invitational that occurred this past weekend. So we're going to break all those down this week here on the podcast. So let's look at, of course, our um, our main stories around the league. Obviously, we're going to start with girls basketball first. Um, the big stories over at Oxford, um, Rachel Breyer. Um, has stepped down as coach at Oxford. She stepped down last month. Um, obviously, when you look at the story here with the Wildcats, um, she was a 94 and 68 in her eight years at Oxford. Um, so when you really look at the, um, when, and of course, she, her best year was 19 and five during the 2023. I mean, during the um, the um, 2022 2023 season, that was the year that um, they ended up. Um, Went, they ended up um, finishing second in the white behind North Farmington. Um, both their losses, though, were to Lake Orient and um, and also North Farmington. They lost to Grand Blank in three straight years. Um, so when you really look at um, when you really look at the um, departure of Briar, um, you know, you kind of look at what Oxford is. You know what I mean? Briar did a heck of a job of that team. She really did. Um, in her eight years coaching, um, the Wildcats. Um, you kind of, you know, since taking over for Coach Steve Ever, and you really look at what she's done. Um, with Oxford, is she's really, you know, put that team on the map. I mean, you know, you look at what they've had. I mean, you look at players like, um, you know, you look at players that they've had. They've had. I mean, like, um. Miranda Wanamco, perfect example. They've had some really talented players on that team. Um, you look at a, um, a Brady Elling. You look at an Allison Huffstedler. Um, you know, an Emma Bugs. Um, I mean, Oxford's really had some great teams that have built on that team. That program was very, very good um, when you look at Oxford. And I really think with the Wildcats um, going forward, um, the question is going to be is who's going to take over that job? Um, you know, considering you look at Oxford, um, you know, they've been through a lot. And, you know, obviously, you know, the question is going to be is who's going to be that guy or girl who's going to lead that program? And, you know, and I think, you know, and I talked to him, Oxford, at like Tony 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 Amers, um, Tony Amers, um, he said that the co- the coaching vacancy is down to three candidates. They're going to talk to three coaches. Um, curious to see who they are. Um, you know, obviously, you know, you know, you look at Oxford. It's 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 a good job to have. I mean, you got great people there. Um, you got um, obviously got OCTV. Um, that covers their games. Obviously, um, you know, I mean, like there's been a couple couple names I've thought about, you know what I mean, when you look at that coaching situation. But when you look at Breyer, um, the reason, you know, I would assume why she's leaving Aussie family. Um, you know, I know that um, you know, and I think that's the reason why, um, you know what I mean, like for um her just stepping away from the game. Um so when I look at Oxford going forward is there's some question marks with this team. I mean, there's a lot of questions when I look at Oxford. Is can the Wildcats um can the Wildcats can they find a way? You know, I mean, obviously you're in a tough division anyway with the Red. <laughs> and the Red is not an easy division to start with. And I really look at with them, it's gonna come down to is Ken Oxford um, find a way to, um, is can the Wildcats find a way to, um, you know, be competitive in this division and, you know, being in the red, when you look at teams like, um, you know, Stony Creek's in there, you got Clarkson's in there, you got Lake Orion's in there, West Bloomfield's in there. Um, that's not going, and it obviously with Ferndale coming into the division, 
that's not going to be an easy um easy say for Oxford, whoever gets the job. And they got a couple things they got to do. Obviously, the coaching transition, you know, unfortunately it has to happen during the season. And, you know, for them, you know, what helps them is they got a re- proven returning starting co- starters, I mean, at least three starters coming back. Um, you look at Allison Huffstedler, Sophia Robb, um, Mia Champagne. Um, you know, you got a young emerging player in Tegan O'Connor. Um, you got um, Brian Cardona. Um, you know, they've got players there. They've got talent there. It's just the question for me when I look at Oxford is going to be is, you know, can they gel with this team? And that's the big question I have with Oxford going forward is can this team gel? I mean, you know, it's not easy replacing a coach who went 64, 94 and 68 in her eight years coaching the team. I mean, this year they went 11 and 12, um, played a more tougher schedule. Um, just in fell to grand blank, 60, 38 in the um, district finals. Um, so there's some questions when I look at with Oxford is, you know, I've always said with Oxford is can this team take the next step? That is the question I have with the Wildcats going forward. Can they take the next step? And when I look at Oxford, um, it'll be interesting to see how the Wildcats take that next step. Um, You know, do they go within the program? They go outside the program. I mean, there's so many question marks with this team. You know, what direction are they going, going at? And program strength is concerned. Um, but what helps with this job is obviously you've got, you know, you got Oxford, um, you got the middle school, um, Oxford Middle School. You got two teams there. You got Oxford Gold and Oxford Blue. Um, they do, I mean, like in the middle school ranks, they have Oxford's, um, they have the youth camp over there at Oxford. Um, so there are a lot of pros to getting this job over here at Oxford. There's a lot of pros, um, you know, and I think it'll be interesting. I mean, like, it'll be interesting to see who gets this job. I mean, it really would be interesting to see where they go. Um, is it somebody, they go with OA ties? Is it somebody within the program? I mean, there's just so many question marks when I look at Oxford is can this team, um, is can this program, you know what I mean, get on the same page with whoever the new coach is? Um, so there's a lot of questions. I mean, like, I've talked to a lot of people at Oxford, and, you know, I know they're looking for, I I mean, like, who who fits best with that culture over there? And obviously, you look at with Oxford, um, you know, the la- I mean, like, obviously, when you have that 19-5 year, um, the way they did, um you know, with the experience they had, obviously you look at a play like Miranda Winemco on that team. With a young team, you look at Brady Elling, Lexi Yankee. Um, you know, they've got, I mean, like, obviously they have, um, you know, there were some others on that team as well. I mean, like, um, that really made some noise for Oxford. Um, but there are some questions. Um, whoever takes the job. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how... Um, you know, whoever takes over over there at Oxford, um, I think it's going to come down to is can they, you know, find the right person to run that program? Um, you know, is it, is it, do they go back into their past? Is it, or they go into the future? I mean, like there's, I mean, Oxford's a really interesting area. I mean, it is a really interesting community. I mean, like, you know, located in Northern Oakland County, um, you know, I mean, they're, um, obviously they're close. I mean, they're, I mean, like, obviously they're, um, near Lapeer, near Lake Orion, near Clarkson, um, program strength is a question mark for Oxford. Um, and it's something to watch and whoever gets the job is going to have a interesting time when it comes to program strengths. Um, but what helps is the area, the community, um, obviously having OCTV over there is going to be a big help. Um, but when you look at what Breyer's done at Oxford, and she's done a wonderful job turning that program around. I mean, she's done a really good job. I mean, obviously, when she took over for Coach Steve Emmert, um, 
they had a down year in Emmert's last year coaching. Now, Breyer was Emmert's assistant. Um, but you really look at, um, you know, you know, it kind of like the seed started to turn, I think, in Breyer's second year. Um, you know, then they had some down years, but then they went right back up. I mean, Oxford's been that team. You know, the only thing that's been a negative has been they've had a lot of bad luck in the postseason. I mean, obviously, three straight years, they've had to play Grand Blank. Um, they've had some tough districts. And, you know, when you look at Oxford, you don't know what district they're going to be in come June. I mean, do they, do the MHA send them to Grand Blank? Um, do they send them south? Do they send them? I mean, they're going to send them south. They're going to send them west. I mean, I don't know if they're going to send them east um, toward Port Huron. And I think if Oxford were to be in a district like they were in volleyball where they went east, um, competing against the likes of Romeo, Port Huron, Port Huron Northern, it would be really interesting to me because Oxford, you know, obviously, you know, they are they are closer to Port Huron. Um, I mean, they're not far from Port Huron. Um, but, you know, obviously, if you have to compare, you know, Oxford to Clark's, to Oxford to Grand Blank, and Clark's in the Grand Blank, where is it? What one's closer? It's Grand Blank. You know, Grand Blank's closer to Clarkston than they are to Oxford. But I think the reason why that Oxford was in a district with Grand Blank is because of where they were at with Lapeer. And Lapeer in Davidson, we know, is pretty close, even though they're in different counties. I mean, Davidson's in Genesee County. Lapeer's in Lapeer County. Um, so, it'll be interesting to see where they go um, come this winter. Um, it'll be interesting to see where, you know, you look at what the Wildcats is. Can Oxford, um, can they, um, you know, can they find the right fit? And I think that's the big question I have with um, Coach Rachel Breyer is, you know, with her no longer there, is can that can this group of girls gel with whoever the new coach is? Um, you don't know what direction they're going to want to go with this program. Um, there's just so many questions when you look at with Oxford. Whoever gets the job, um, it'll be very interesting to see how um how this team goes, and I think it'll be really something to really watch for um, going forward with Grove. So. A lot to look at with them, and I think it's going to be something to keep a really close eye on. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see where this team goes, and I think it'll be interesting to see how, um, you know, can this can this team really, um, you know, can this team really, um, you know, can they handle the transition period? Can they handle things, you know, going into the season? I think that's going to be the big question mark for um that's going to be the big question mark for um, Oxford going forward is can this team, you know, can this team really, you know, find ways to, um, you know, and I think that's going to be the key is can this team really find a way to um, make some noise? And I think that's going to be the key going forward with Oxford. So we're going to keep an eye on it. Obviously, you look at, of course, the other girls basketball jobs still there. Um, Groves is there. Um, Allison Heidi stepped down, um, Rochester, um, with Bill Thurston stepping down, um, you know, obviously, um, we talked about both, both, um, departures, um, so that's gonna be something to really watch for, um, you know, as both those jobs, I haven't heard anything from Bloomfield Hills, um, considering what's going on with them, they haven't released anything, uh, press release or anything like that, but that'll be something to really keep an eye on, um, so for Coach Rachel Breyer, um, had a great year. I mean, he had a great career, eight years coaching at Oxford. Um, uh, obviously family reasons um was one of the reasons why um he stepped down. Um I wish you the best of luck. And um, you know, we'll see what happens with Oxford um, going forward. Um I know talking to co to um athletic director Tony Tamer, um he said there were three candidates that applied for the job and you know they're gonna talk to him this week um you know hopefully you know a coach will come in you know they'll have a coach in place maybe within the within a couple weeks so we'll see what happens because obviously summer league is starting up and you know so that'll be something to really really watch for um with oxford going forward so 
we'll see what happens going forward with the um with everything going on with the Wildcats. But it it's gonna be something to really watch for. Um, but right now you look at I know three jobs in girls basketball open. Um, Groves, Rochester, and now you put Oxford into the fold. So we'll see what happens going forward there. All right, now let's go to some track and field news. Obviously, um, you know we just had the Elmer um. Ball Invitational. Um, we're going to recap, of course, the um, teams um, who were in this meet. Um, starting with the guys. Um, you know, when you look at what happened there in the guys. Um, Ann Arbor here on won the meet, scoring 103 points. Um, and um, Adams was second with 66. Um, and obviously, when you look at the scores, I mean, like, Adams was second with 66. Um, Troy Athens was third with 47 points. West Bloomfield fourth with 44 points. Um, Troy was sixth with 38. Lake Orion was seventh with 37. Oxford was eighth with 36. Um, Groves was 11th with 27 points. Grove, I mean, like um, Farmington was 13th with um, 21 points tied with North Farmington. Um, I mean, like, um, Bloomfield Hills was tied for 16th with 14 points. Stony Creek was tied for 19th with 10 points along with Ferndale. Um, and then Berkeley had four points and Avondale only scored one point. So let's look at the 100 meter first. I mean, obviously, Evan Watson and Troy Athens won it with running 11.4. Um, Devin James was third for West Bloomfield with 11.31. Um, um, Jason Hamilton of Troy was fifth with 11.47. Um, Drew Hapner was um, seventh with 11.65. Um, that rounded out the scoring for the OAA. I mean, Noah Uri was um, ninth for Troy with 11.68. Had a tough loss to um, Giorgio Pitts of Ann Arbor Huron, who um, ran 11.67. Um, you know, and then other scores, Jalen Gilmore ran an 11.87 for. Um, North Farmington and John and, and um and um Yante Pittman ran a twelve for Oxford. Um, that was the hundred meter stand results and two hundred meter results. Um, you know Jason Hamilton at Troy twenty two point fifty seven, Devin James West Bloomfield um twenty two seventy. Um, Hamilton was from Troy. Um, Ann Arbor Huron took third and fourth. Um, Warren DSL took fifth. Birmingham Brother Rice took sixth. Um. Wall Lake Western seventh. Um, Allen Park took eighth. Um, Gavin Bush of Seaholm was eleventh with um, you know, running a twenty four point oh four. Um, Jalen Gilmore twenty four point seven eight. Liam Duggan of Stony Creek was a um twenty four point seven nine for Stony Creek. So, you know, so really, you know what I mean. In the hundred two hundred, um, you kind of seen where Troy's at. And Evan Watson took the 400, 48.04. Um, Caleb Nelson, 5096 for North Farmington was third. Um, Julian Farrell, Troy Athens was sixth with them, 51.83. Um, Jeremiah Mack of Groves, 52.36, rounded out the scoring for the Falcons. Um, Gavin Bush was 11th with 53.28. Um, Sam Bucci of Adams was 53.37. Um, Jalen Wade of Ferndale was 53.48. Liam Duggan, Stony Creek was 53.52. Braden Pertz of Oxford was 53.85. Trey Walker of Stony Creek, 54.4. Um, Jackson R Rudolph for Bloopy Hills was 18th with 54.23. Terrence James Gav Gavado of North Farmington was 54.23. Judah Shoot of Ferndale was 54.28. Um... Caden Gitson of Bloomfield Hills, 54.66. Noah Pratt of Oxford was 23rd with 54.72. Um, you know, rounding out the top 25, um, Mason Beckman of um, Blue of um, Bloomfield Hill, I mean, of Warren DSL was 54.93. So, you know, Troy Athens, of course, doing their damage in the sprint events, um, getting some big points, especially from Evan Watts, and we know how good he's been. Um, throughout his career. So, you know, really interesting. Good day for Troy Athens. Um, good day for Mr. Watson. I'm um, doing really well in the um in the um sprint relays. Um and even long distance. Um eight hundred meter um 
Troy, Troy Athens, Oxford, um, Lu Louis De Souza, Troy took second, um, 159.64 behind Andrew Mercy of Waterford Kettering, who went a 159 flat. Miles Linden was third for Troy Athens, 201.26. James Kusak of Oxford was fourth with 202.78. Chris Campbell, fifth of Stony Creek, 203.06. Um, Musa K of West Bloomfield was sixth with them, um, 204.85. Um, and that rounded out the scoring for the OAA. Um, Charles Santella for 12th for Adams with 206.75. Jalen Bannister, 13th from at for Ferndale with 207. Point one oh one, Caden Catham of Oxford was fourteenth with um two oh seven twenty, um Gautam Vienti of Troy was um was two oh seven seventy four. Quentin O'Shea of Berkeley was seventeenth with two oh eight eight seven. Carmelo Tuthalo of Farmington was eighteenth with two oh eight point six one. Um Dylan Dylan Shore of Seahome was two oh nine five eight. Um. George um, Lubis in North Farmington was 203, uh, 213.02. Um, Michael Dolan of Groves was 213.08 for Groves. Um, Pennell Bessie Bloomfield Hills was 26 with 213.68. Timothy and Timothy Munsfield rounding out the um, top 27, 214.32. Um, um, Daniel Gonzalez was 29th with 214.98. And Jack Loxon of Lake Orion. Run out the top 30 with 215.75. So that's the top 30 of the 800 meter relay, or the 800 meter dash. The mile, um, James Kusek of Oxford, 427.11, continuing his dominant year um, for the Wildcats. Um, Connor Moya was third um, with 436.29. Lucas Ames was fourth with um, 438.87. Um, Julian Brenner, um, was seventh with, um, 444.35. Um, Aiden LaVictor of Groves was eighth, rounded out the scoring of 444.88. Um, Sean Stein of Lake Orion, um, 448.39. Um, Connor Duffy of Farmington was 448.59. Griffin Moore was 13th with 448.87. William Kelly was, um, from Adams was 14th with 449.96. Um, rounded out the top 15 for um, the eight for the mile relay for the mile um, for the mile um, 3200 meter. Um, Tanya Levison was first for Bloomfield Hills 940.67. Reynolds Lee of Adams was second with 10.10.91. Cassidy Feeney of um, Oxford was third with 10.14.52. Owen Rickard of Berkeley was fifth with um 10.17.54. Um and that rounded up and Benjamin Perona of Farmington was rounded out the top eight with 10.30.69. Um Alexander Hamilton was a tight was had was ninth with um 10.31.09 for um North Farmington. Olivia Oliver House was um eleventh for Lake Orion was 10.45.67. Um Aiden LaVictor for Groves was um Rounded out the top 15 with 1048.11. So that's the top 15 of the um of the um 800 meter of the mile of the 1300. The 110 hurdles. Um the 110 hurdles, Michael Wilkerson of Adams, Vincent Daniel, that Adams dominant hurdle team, um, was first and second, getting 18 points for Rochester Adams, 1492, 1497 respectively. Um, Angela Finney of West Bloomfield was 1574, took fourth. Curtis Sharif of, of, um, of West Bloomfield was fifth with 1574. Um, Brennan La R Randall of Bloomfield Hills was seventh with 1630. And then Keyshawn Sh Stewart of Avondale was eighth with 1648. So Adams really dominated the hurdles in the, in the 110 hurdles. Um, the 300 hurdles, um, Wilkerson won that for Adams on 39-21. Um, Danso of Adams was third um, with 39-30. Angela Finley was 39-84. Ellen Gregory of, Blue, of Groves was fifth with them 40-58. Andrew Dracos of Lake Orion was sixth with them 40-84. Um, Brennan Randall was seventh with 41-13. And then Curtis Sharif um, rounded out the top eight for West Bloomfield. 41-64. John Howell 
was ninth with 41.88. Um, Ryder Reese was 11th with 467. Um, Jacob Chud of Oxford was 13th with 43.66. Keyshawn Stewart was 14th with 43.67. So that's the top 15 of the 300 hurdles. Um, four by one. This, I mean, I know a lot of people said get bored and bored of what I've been saying, obviously, but we got to get these results in, obviously. Um, Farmington was third. Um, Troy was Troy was fifth. North Farmington six. Um, Lake Orion was eighth, rounding out the scoring um, in the four by um, in the four by one. Ann Arbor here ended up winning that relay. Um, four by two. Um, four by two. Wall Lake Western won it. Adams was second. Um, Farmington four. Troy fifth. Athens six. Um, Stony Creek wound out the scoring. Um, Ferndale was a really tough ninth. North Farmington was a really tough tenth. Um, Avenue was 11th. So, you know, that was how close that race was over there um, in the 4x2. 4x4. 4x4. Athens won that. Obviously, a lot of that was Evan Watson. Um, 322.46. West Bloomfield was third, 326.26. Adams was fourth, 327.52. Ferndale, 336.29, was fifth. Um, and Stony Creek wanted out the scoring with 338.30. So, you know, Oxford was a tough ninth. Um, Lake Orion was 10th. Bloomfield Hills was 11th. Um, Farmington was 13th. Seaholm, 14th. And Avondale, 15th to round out the um, scoring there. Um, four by four. I mean, no, I take it back. Um, four by eight. Um, the four by eight in the boys. Um, Oxford won that pretty handily. Um, Ferndale was third. Groves fourth. Lake Orion fifth. Um, West Bloomfield sixth. Troy seventh. Um, rounded out the scoring. Of course, Seaholm took eleventh. Avenue thirteenth. North Farmington fourteenth. And Adams got DQ'd in the four by eight. Um, field events. Um, Field events in the um, shot, in the shot, obviously, um, in the shot put here, um, William Vaughn, I mean, this is where I saw, I was here at the um, shot put area of this meet on Saturday, I attended that, um, Liam Vaughn, Wall Lake Western, he's a legit thrower, I'll tell you that much right now, anytime you throw a 55.2 and a quarter, that says a lot, it does, really does, his form was excellent, Mechanics were there. He had a nice day. Omari Harrison of Groves was second with 52 feet and a quarter. Um, Caden DeGreffin Reed of Lake Orion was fourth with 46, 10 and a half. Spencer Beekman fifth um, through 46 feet, 10 and a half. Um, that was a very tough one there. Tiebreaker was the difference there between fourth and fifth. Um, DeGreffin Reed knocked off um, Beekman based on the tiebreaker. Um, and then Dwayne Broom of West Bloomfield rounded out the scoring, throwing 43 feet, six and two quarters. Um, Artella Wilson of um, North Farmington threw a 42 six. That was tense. Christian Hood from West Bloomfield, 40 feet, six and a half. Wayne McPherson of Adams threw 40 feet, one. Jaden Barrero and Jaden Barrero of Lake Orion rounded out the top 15, um, throwing a 39 eight. So, really interesting, you know, shot put. Um, in that meet, um, discus in discus, obviously, you look at him. Um, Andre Newman of Lakeland won that one with 157 1. Vaughn was second, 151 6. Ray of Azoria of Groves, 149. Johnny Jackson of Adams, 140. Caden DeGreffery of Lake Orion was fifth with 137. William McPherson of Adams, 135 2. Um, that rounded out the scoring for the OA. I mean, Attell Wilson was 11th with the 127.10. Hayden Crum, 12th with 127.8. Um, Matthew Wingard of Seaholm was 121. And then uh, John um, Spritzer of Troy was um, 14th with 120 feet 8. And then William Vaughn, and then Vaughn Hopmanner of Farmington was um, 15th with um, 120.65. So, really interesting. You know, really interesting how the discus went in the boys. I mean, like, um, high jump, um, high jump. I mean, like, um, Ann Arbor Huron did some damage here. Um, Josh Calhoun was 
fourth with them was fourth with five feet, jumped five feet ten. Donovan Scott also jumped five feet ten, but lost the tiebreaker. Bobby Dansley at Groves was six with five seven. Uh, Jonathan M Matcher up North Farmington was tied for six as well, five seven, and that rounded out the scoring for North Farm for um the scoring for the um for that meet. Um, pole vault, pole vault. Um, Tyler Moen of Lake Orion won that one. Um, Nolan Rose was um was also third on that one for Lake Orion. Um, and then that rounded out the scoring. So Lake Orion had a really nice showing in discus. No, in the pole vault on the men's side, and then long jump, and then long jump. Obviously, um, Preston Gardner of North Farmington. We know how good she's been. 22 feet, 11 and a quarter. Um, Jalen Vaughn of Farmington, um, 21.9, um, took third. <coughs> Jamar Peterson of Farmington was sixth with 20 feet, eight. And um, Latosh Chillison of Adams, uh, 20 feet, four and a half. Gary Maxwell for Ferndale was ninth with them, 20 feet and a quarter. So those are the top teams, um, top, top, top few rankings here. Um, on the guy on the um, on the men's side. Um, on the women's side, Lake Orion ended up winning this meet with 89 points. Um, so let's look at the standings here. Um, how this went. Um, Cameron Tatum, West Bluefield, um, 12.26, legit, really good athlete, really good athlete. Maddie Pirowski was second with 12.84. Tyra Thompson of Ferndale was third with um. With um 13.11. Allie Fouts of Lake Orion was 13.14, fourth. Um Sherilyn Webster of Groves was 13.28. Nicole the of Berkeley was seventh with 13.36. Um and that rounded out the um scoring for um that rounded out the scoring for um the meet. Um Alyssa Stevens was 10th with 13.55. Joriah Lewis of Adams was 11th with 13.56. Cheyenne Weens of North Farmington was 13.58. Lauren Mocker was um, 13th with um, 13.62. Jenna Engelbred of Lake Orion was 13.65. And Nadia Drawage of Oxford was um, 13.80. Um, so that's the 100 meter. The 200 meter. Um, the 200 meter in the girls. Um, Cameron Tatum. 2538 London James um 2598 18 points for West Bloomfield there Maddie Petrosky third with 2614 um Bianca Everjua of Farmington was fifth with 2628 Naja Williams of Ferndale was 2652 um Tyra Thompson rounded out the scoring for Ferndale with 2728 um other scores Diamond Prince I mean other um you know who was in the final Diamond Prince of Troy obviously we know she's the basketball standoff for Troy um, 2754, Sheridan Webster, 2777, and Jenna Engelbratt of Lake Orion was 15th with 2832. So, interesting that one there. 400 meter, 400 meter here. Um, Bianca Abachu was first for Farmington. Bloomby Hills was second with Sloan Schiller at 5858. Naja Williams was third. Um, Sailor Papadalis was, um, fourth with, um, one minute, 41 seconds. Nadia Call, um, leading Lake Orion's terrific freshman class, um, with 102.42. Um, Leah Marshall was six with 102.58. Um, that rounded out the scoring for, um, for the, um, for the Heat. Obviously, you go 10, 8, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 in invitationals. Um, so that was the, um. You know, so that was where um, so we're gonna go by the top eight. So, you know, so that was the standings in the four hundred meter, eight hundred meter. This is the um, a lot. I mean, like um, Soapy Sally Lake Orion was second with twenty two two point two two five eight. Um, Soapy of Sea Home was third with twenty twenty two point two two nine three. Um, Sydney Grouse of Stony Creek fourth with two two twenty three point three one. Um. And Kaylin Kapow of Adams rounded out the scoring with 2.2654. Um, her teammate Anna Lopez was ninth with 226.59. So, you know, it was really tight between Adams um, and also Caitlin Parrish Farmington. 
2.2727. So really tight between eighth, you know, between eighth and tenth. So really tight there in that in that event in the 800 meter. The mile, um, the mile, um, won by Ann Arbor Huron. Um, Aubrey Mary was the OA um, representative for Oxford, 536.45, took fourth. Um, Caitlin Capata of uh, Adams was sixth with 540.52. And I, uh, Annalise Griffin of Bloopia Hills was seventh with um, 540.79. And Olivia Jenny of Bloopia Hills was was um, eighth with 541.37. Um, rounded out the scoring for... Um, for um in that meet in the, in the mile two mile um 3200 obviously um you know Hannah the Roke Lake Orion won that with 113071 Leah Corby was second with 113265 um Brady Elling of Oxford you know basketball stand out for them 113855 Eli Eli McMahon of Adams was fourth with 121698 um Samantha Memmer of uh, Seaholm was sixth with 1250.35. Isabel Hansen of Stony Creek was seventh with 1258. And Rebecca Secord of um, Oxford was eighth, rounding out the scoring with 13.17. Um, Alex of uh, 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 of Farmington, um, Eichelben of Farmington, um, apologize for not getting your name right here. Um, 13.2041. And Tatiana Sachs of Seaholm. 1331 um, 0.16. So that rounded out the um, top 10 there in the 3200 meter. Um, 100 meter hurdles, I mean, the 110 hurdles. Um, obviously, Gabby Robinson won it for Troy Athens. Sabrina DiMaggio was second. Um, Gregorian Dunlin of Troy was fourth um, for um, Troy. Um, Taylor Bordeur from Oxford was sixth. Um, Carolyn Dwyer of Oxford was seventh, and um, Resmai Kumar of Troy was eighth with um, 1839 for um, rounding out the scoring there. Um, 300 hurdles, um, 300 hurdles. Um, Jalen Marks of West Bloomby was first with 4701. Um, Georgie and Dungian of Troy was um, third with 4949. Caleb Bolshevitz of Avondale was fourth with um, 50-28. Caleb Berder of Oxford was sixth with 50-40. Olivia Bagnerson of Lake Orion was seventh with 50-76. And Reshmi Kumar was eighth for Troy with them um, 50-81. Um, Lauren Witz was ninth on, um, for Lake Orion, 50-83. Um, Isabel Tudeau, Thibodeau of North Farmington was um, 50-84 for the Falcons running out the top ten. Um, and then the four by one, four by one, um, West Bloomfield won that. It was a, um, I think it was, I think it was the record at Oxford. I'm not, I think it was the record at Oxford. Um, Lena Graves, London James, Ezeke Abalgier and Cameron Tatum, 48-12. Ferndale was second, 50-53. Crows fourth, 51-42. Lake Orion fifth, 51-55. Um, Berkeley was seventh with 52.63. Adams rounded out the scoring, um, taking ace with 52.68. Oxford was ninth with 52.82. Um, that was the four by one. Um, that was the four by one relay here. Um, four by two. Um, four by two. Um, West Bloomfield won that. Um, 144.00. 06, Ferndale second, 147.88. Bloopy Hills was third, 148.17. Lake Orion fourth, 148.88. Um, Farmington was sixth, with 149.55. Stony Creek rounded out the scoring with 149.99. Um, holding off Farmington was Mercy in a really tight race. And also Groves as well, who also took 10th. And Adams. Um, so it was really tight um, between... For with between between um fifth and um between fifth and um twelfth separated by three seconds um thirteenth separated by three seconds so it really interesting to see how this one go how this one went um that's what the four by two does um four by four um the four by four here um Lake Orion won that one four eleven um thirty. 
Gloomby Hill second, um, 413.30. Um, Seaholm was fifth, 422.46. Um, Troy was seventh, 428.30. Um, Stony Creek was eighth, round out scoring 428.68, holding off flushing. Adams ended up taking tenth with 432.50. Um, so it's the top 10 in the 4x4, 4x8. Um, in the 4x8, um, Oxford won that one. Um, tight over Ann Arbor here on 1001.02. Um, Adams was third, um, 10 14 18. Seaholm was fourth with 10 16 35. Lake Orion fifth, 10 17 32. Stony Creek was seventh with 10 43 09. Troy ran out scoring with 10 56 97. So. Interesting race there. Um, the shot put. Um, Ann Arbor Huron's got a really legit thrower. Um, and Abigail Russell, one of the best throwers in the state of Michigan. Um, she threw 44 10 in a, in a three quarters. Faith Moore had a nice day for Farmington, second place, 36 8 in the quarter. Gavin McCauley of um, Berkeley was third, 33 8 in a, in a half and a quarter. Brooke Malone. Shockingly, I mean, like surprisingly, you know what I mean? Like, you know, no, I mean, like coming in, um, she had a PR through 32 8 and three quarters. Isabel DeLong of Lake Orion was sixth with 31 8. Um, and that rounded out the scoring. Tegan O'Connor was ninth for Ox with 30 feet four and a quarter. Makai Jenich of Stony Creek was um, 10th with 30 feet three and a quarter. So. And West Bloomfield's Larry Sharif was 12th, 30 feet, one and a, and a quarter. So, and Melanie Thomas, 13, 28 feet, 10 and um, a half. So, interesting here in the shot put area, rain of things here. Um, the discus here, Abigail Russell, what can you say about her? 165. Molly Socia, second, 115.8. Um, Rocco Brantley of Seaholm was third with 94-9. Jordan Jacobs of Groves was sixth with 93-3. Adela Stevens of Adams was seventh with 92-4. And Eddie Marie King was um, eighth with 89-4. Um, you know, obviously, you got Lydia Sharif. Lydia Sharif of West Bloomfield was tenth with 86-4. Tegan O'Connor was 11th, 86-1. Isabel DeLong was 86th with 12th. Hannah Presby of Oxford was 14th with them, 81-11. Jada Adams was on 15th, 81-5. So, top 15 there. Um, the high jump, um, the high jump, um, Rachel Hibbs of Farmington was second with five feet. Micaiah Redman of Lake Orion was five feet as well. Um, Helen Bergmaker of Farmington was five feet. Um, Molly Heller of Girls was sixth with 410. Diamond Prince of Troy tied for seventh with Emma Wenzel's. Um, also jumped four feet. Um, seven. That rounded out the scoring for um, Nadia Drowage also hit four seven. Um, Anna Rich also hit four seven as well. Um, a lot of a lot of people going four seven. I mean, like that was, you know, very interesting to see. Um, really interesting to see how this one you know, to see how this one goes. And, you know, and then we got, um, pole vault. Pole vault, of course, usually this is where, um, this is where, you know, you look at the Sabrina DiMaggio of Lake Orion, 11, 6. Um, Lily Badgren of Lake Orion, her teammate was fourth with eight, eight feet. Avery Hens of Oxford was second with nine, six. Um, Le Layla Sharif was six with seven feet. Madeline Hernandez of Oxford was Tied for six with seven feet. Um, and then um, that round out scoring. Ella Barron of Farmington was ninth with tied for ninth with six um, feet, along with um, Sarah Marchinchek of Farmington also went six feet in the pole vault. And then last but not least, long jump. Um, obviously, um, you know, Anaya Billups, standoff from North Farmington, played girls basketball this year, took third with 16.4 and a half. Uh, Dana, Dana Pearson of Ferndale was second with 16.7 and a quarter. Um, Bella Colonna Troy was fifth with 16.075. Layla Raj of Adams was sixth with 16 feet and a half. 
Amara Gasson of Bard Farmington was 15 feet 11. Olivia Bangerson and Blake Warren took ninth, did not place. Um, Sorrenti Carrier of um, Ferndale was 10th with 15.1 and 2.5. Um, Ellie Cassessa of Stony Creek was 15 feet and a half. And her teammate Jackie Hurch was 12th with them, 15 feet. Sasha McClellan of Avondale, another basketball standout, um, 14 feet, 11 and a quarter. Um, and Olivia Jackson out of the top 15 for Troy, jumping 14 feet, 11 inches. So, very interesting to see, you know, how the results here, and then I'm going to pull up here the team results here. Um, and we're going to recap this Invitational. Um, obviously, we've recapped it. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, on the boys' side, the girls' side, Lake Orion won, as mentioned, with 89 points. West Bloomfield second with 63 points. Um, Oxford and Ferndale tied for fourth with 40 points each. Farmington was sixth with 39 Bloopy Hills was 7th with 33. Um, Troy was 9th with 26 and a half. Troy Athens was 10th, tied for 10th with Midland Dow, Wall Lake Western, Ann Arbor Huron with um, 24 points. Adams was 14th with 22.5. Seaholm 15th with 22. S um, Stony Creek was 16th with um, 19 points. Um, Romeo was 19th with, I'm sorry, Groves was 20th with 14 points. Berkeley, um, Berkeley was um, 22nd with 10 points. North Farmington had 8 points. And Avondale rounded out the OA scoring with 5 points. So, a lot to, lot we covered on. A lot we covered. So, it was really interesting to see how things went. And, you know, you really look at, of course, you know, looking at the previews for track and field coming up. We got the regional coming up pretty soon. Um course the OA we were represented there we're still in the heart of league play um so it'll be interesting to see how this goes um looking at it so we'll see what happens um we're gonna see what happens um when you look at that situation um how it goes so there's a lot to look at um you know a lot to look at obviously with the um you know, with everything that's been going on, the situation, um, you know, we'll see. I mean, league, they're still in league play. Um, you got more invitations coming up. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how, um, to see how this will go. And I think it'll be interesting to see, um, you know, and obviously when you look at the Elmer Ball Invitational, you know, it kind of like a, it kind of like it's an indicator to where everybody's at right now. And I really think right now with some of these teams where they're at, um, you got to like where some of them are at. Others, you know, they didn't have a great day, but, you know, in track, there's always that opportunity to have a big day and then, you know, have a good day. And then at times there's days that you really don't have a, you really struggle. So there's a lot to really look at. Um, especially as we head into the final weeks of the season um, going forward. So, softball, not a lot of changes. Stony Creek um, still is the best team in softball, the way they've been playing. Lake Orion, um, really curious to see where that where they are at right now when you look at softball. Baseball, it's a, it's a mess right now when you look at it. I still think West Bloopy is still the team to beat um, in baseball. Um, lacrosse right now. I think that's still Clarkston and Lake Orion in the boys' side. Girls, Bloomfield Hills. Um, I know Troy. Troy's been starting to get some love a little bit. They did knock off Birmingham, which is huge. Um, especially for that for them. Um, obviously when you look at the play of the Colts, um, I gotta give some love to the Troy. Um, girls lacrosse team. Um. You know, knocking off Bloomfield Hills. I mean, knocking off Birmingham, which is a huge statement win for them. Um, so the, I like where they're at right now. Um, girls soccer, I'm still can't trying to figure out what's going on with Rochester. I mean, obviously Troy's ranked, Troy Athens. Um, but I'm trying to figure out what is going on with Rochester because they were coming in with high expectations. Last year, they were ranked number one in the state. Um Ended up losing to Stony Creek in the um, in the district final. Um, 
just really, you know what I mean? I just don't know what's going on with that team. I just don't know how to say this. It's, it's, it's tough because, you know, when you look at a team that's been struggling, I mean, Rochester's been really been struggling. I don't know what's going on with them. Um, you know, obviously Stony Creek, you know what I mean? They're, they're struggling a little bit. Adams has been up and down. So we'll see what happens. I mean, we're going to see what happens with them. I just think with, at the end of the day, you know, Rochester's got to get their act together. They don't, they're in trouble. Um, that's really what I have right now in soccer. Um, right now it's Rochester. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm still trying to figure them out right now when you look at them. Um, and then, um, and then we got golf, obviously Troy Athens, Adams. Um, they've been doing very well right now. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see how this goes. And I think it'll be key to really look at with them going forward. Um, so it'll be something to really watch for there. Um, golf, I mean, like Athens, you know, Adams there. Um, and then obviously tennis, you know, you got Clarkson still the team to beat there. So we'll see what happens going forward there. But that's right now the spring sport update, of course. Um, I know we did a lot of like, um, a lot of track and field coverage, obviously, when you look at the um, the teams there in track and field. I still think Oak Park's still the team to beat um, overall. But, you know, I was a little surprised they didn't go, they didn't come to the Oxford Invitational. Um, but it was a good meet. I mean, really good meet. I mean, a lot of competitiveness. Um, obviously, you look at, I didn't expect, I'll be honest with you. I mean, like, you know what I mean? Like, um, you know, you really look at, some teams right now, you know, kind of look at Rochester still. I think they're going to be a team to beat come league meet time. Um, I I think that, um, you know, if Lake Orion fully healthy, I think they give Rochester a battle. Um, but I still think when I look at the girls' side of things in the red and the red-white, um, it's right now I would have to say Rochester's the best team in the girls' side. Boys, I would have to say... You know, I would have to put Clarks in that conversation. Um, you know, I think they, I mean, I like where Troy's at. Um, but actually, take that back. I think Adams is the best team in boys right now. I mean, Adams, I think Adams and Adams and Rochester right now in the red slash white. Um, gold, I would have, blue slash gold, I would still have to say it's Oak Park and the girls. Um, boys. West Bloomfield is going to have a huge day. Now, if West Bloomfield have a huge day against Oak Park, so that'll be really interesting to see how things will be going forward. So, a lot to look at um, this week. So, we'll see what happens going forward. On a personal note here, I'd like to um, want to wish, congrats. I mean, like, of course, my podcast, Oway Now, was voted the um, 2023 Owen TV um, Podcast of the Year. I um, want to thank um, OA Nation for, um, you know, this opportunity, you know, to cover OA sports around the area. I know a lot of it. We got particularly football, basketball, um, you know, trying to trying to get my um, knowledge of the other sports around the area. I mean, it's been tough, but, you know, I just want to tell my viewers that, um, you know, my um, podcast OA Now, um, we just won podcast of the year. Um, just wanted to give you guys that, um, heads up and, um, you know, if I get congratulations from Moy Nation, um, feel free to tweet me on Twitter at Saginaw Bay or, um, you know, so, um, just want to give you guys that heads up. So we'll see what happens going forward. Um, you know, hoping the podcast, obviously, um, you know what I mean? Like giving you guys the best, um, coverage that I can give you around the OA. Also, I had the blog as well at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. Also, to keep an eye on as well. So, we're going to keep an eye on the coasting situations over at Sea Home for Boys. Even though I've been hearing a lot of rumblings over there um, that they do have a coach in place, but I can't confirm it yet. Um, Bloompia Hills. Um, and the girls' side got Bloompia Hills. Um, I haven't heard anything about them yet, but I've been hearing rumblings about them. Um, Rochester, Groves, and Oxford obviously are looking for new coaches. Um, you know, those are three, the, those are three schools that are... Um, be curious to see, really keeping an eye on. Um, other than that, I mean, like, you know, that's the 
basketball front. So we're hoping to have something going on um, within the next few weeks to um, especially in the month of May here um, shortly here. Um, obviously, starting with summer ball and everything, hoping to have coaches in place before the start of summer ball. So we'll see what happens going forward. And I think we're going to know a lot more about, you know, about the basketball hires um, coming up really, really shortly. So we'll see what happens going forward. Everybody want to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Sangal Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you all next week. Take care and see you then. God bless. And see you all soon. God bless. You.